What's going on my dummies and welcome to my first card by Vanguard deck tech. The first one will be Orphus, which apparently people call the best deck in format. I'm going to call it the coolest mid-range deck in format, but that's as far as it goes. I think there's other decks that are a lot more powerful than it, but it is a very, very fun deck to play. It utilizes these cards called Shadow Army Tokens, um, which are very, very powerful, but... Without further ado, I'm going to get into it. We're going to start with the ride deck. The first card is going to be our starter, Cardinal Fane Provi. Um, just draws us a card on our turn if we're going second, and we ride on top of it. Um, nothing else too super cool about it. The next one in the ride chain is Cardinal Noid Rontus. Or Rotus. Um, he's 8K power. Um, whenever we place him on the Vanguard Circle, we can search our deck for a world card and reveal it, put it into our hand, shuffle our deck. Normally, we're going to be great grabbing the grade 2 one, or um, if we already have two grade 2s, we grab the spot removal in the grade 3, but that's about it. Um, also, he's got a rear guard ability. I don't play any of these in the main deck, but the rear guard ability does state during the battle, this unit attacked or boosted. If your world is in the Dark Knight or Visual Dark Knight, gain plus 2k. The next card in the ride deck is Cardinal Noid Kubisa. Um, and I'm probably going to slaughter every single one of these uh, names, so bear with me. Uh, on Vanguard Circle, uh, when a world is put into your order zone, choose one of your units and it gets plus 5k power until the end of turn. And then Continuous, since I do play these in the main deck, um, during your turn, if your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, this unit gets plus 5k. So we're able to give other units plus 5k if we are in Knight. So we're able to, uh, or when we play these cards, like the Grade 2 one, we go right in the Noid, call a unit, play the Order, Soul Blast to give that unit plus 5k, and to draw a card off of the Soul Blast, so on and so forth. Pretty, pretty good combo. And finally, we have the namesake card in Cardinal Dias Orphus. Um... I don't have SP of this one. It's kind of unfortunate because these other three are SP, but that is a good plan for the future. He's got an ability during van or during your turn, Vanguard, Rearguard, Continuous. Um, if your world is Dark Knight or Abyssal Dark Knight, he gets plus 5k power. Remember, this does work on Rearguard Circle as well, so we're able to break a barrier for the 13k bodies with a boosted token, so keep that in mind. Also, act. If your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, you can counterblast two to call up to two or three, not two, Shadow Army tokens, um, which are these right here. Um, they're 15k boosters. They don't have intercept. They're pretty good cards overall. Um, so he's just free card advantage for your counterblasts. But moving forward, we have our triggers. Oh gosh, I was not prepared. Um, first things first, we play a four of of Cardinal Draco Barbzion Barbazondi um, 15k shield critical um, we want crits in this deck we want to be as aggressive as possible so without the crits then we wouldn't be able to deal as much damage as we need to because this is a mid-range deck we want to deal a lot of damage over time uh, next up we have a playset of Aurora Princess Loris Yellow. Now, if you don't want to go out and get the starter deck to get these because these are expensive or you don't have enough money to get them from the premium collection, you can, however, get them from, um, or you can use front triggers. I've learned front triggers don't really help out as much because we still want to be doing the extra damage. And since our stuff is so big, perfect guards are kind of easy for our opponents to play. So we kind of want to spread out these critical triggers if we have to. Um, moving forward, we play a three of of the draw trigger, which is Cardinal Fane Fulgors. Um, I think I said that right. Uh, just a regular draw. Um, again, you can play these as front triggers. I just like the draw power just in case you need it. Um, I think three is a pretty healthy amount to have in this deck. Moving forward, and I'm going to move these up some just in case. Moving forward, we have a play set of Cardinal Prima Nabilum. Um, just regular hero trigger, 15k shield, um, nothing too fancy about it. And finally, we have our over trigger, which is Star Dragon Deity of Infinitude Eldobreath. 
Um, of course, when we drive check this as a... Uh, yeah, when we drive check it, not whenever we check it as damage, all of our units get uh, double their power and a critical to the front row. Um, this this is pretty cool. Like There has been games where I try to be extremely aggressive, and on my two tur turn two turn, I'll play... Um, one Kabusia, and then I'll play another Kabusia with the order, and then I'll hit one of these, and it just does so much damage that it pushes your opponent back so much. Of course, it does give them the counter blast to play around with on their grade two, grade three turn, but it puts enough pressure where our opponent has to start guarding early. Um, of course, million power, just like all the rest of the over triggers, but that is all of the triggers for the deck. Um, Overall, just extremely aggressive, if possible. Moving forward, we have four useful recharger. This is uh, pretty good for the deck because we don't have a lot of guard to begin with. Um, so this allows us to be able to guard. We do have a high number of counter blasts between Orphis and this card. Um, I mean, there's another card that counter blasts in this deck as well. But um, overall... This card is extremely important. It is a 15k shield as long as um, we're an Abyssal Dark Knight, which is not very hard to get into. So, uh, yeah, pretty good card overall. Moving forward, we play a playset of <sighs> De Detonation Mutant Boalmind. Okay, Boalmind. Um, great one. AK, uh, at the end of the battle that it boosted, if your order zone has a set order, you can put this card in the soul to counter charge one. This is good. Like I said, we go through a lot of counter blast in this deck. So being able to counter charge one is most of the time pretty relevant. So we can have that extra counter blast for a useful recharger if we do need to use it. Um, but yeah. Overall, really good. I try not to use his effect as much as possible unless I really, really need the um, the counter charge or the counter blast because like he is a unit that we're wasting. Even though Orphis does create other units, we can't intercept with those units, but he is still an 8k booster. So it forces our opponent to either get rid of it or get rid of something else. So that is a thing. Moving forward, we have Violet Dragon. He is the, uh, or Violate Dragon, he is the perfect guard. Um, interesting thing if you're just now getting into uh, Overdress and you're used to the old ones. If you have two or more cards in your hand, you have to discard a card to use the perfect guard. But if you're at two or less, whenever you put him on Guardian Circle, you do not have to discard to use this ability. It is a very cool effect. I do very much like it. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, perfect guards can be used later for less card advantage or for more card advantage. So that is a positive. Moving forward, we play two Cardinaloid Kubasia um, in the main deck. Of course, like I said, he's got the rear guard effect that during your turn, if your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, he does get plus 5k. So he is a 15k attacker that replaces those shadow tokens. That does have intercepts, so that is a very nice thing to have. Um, <coughs> Uh, like one thing that I did say that I enjoy doing is having one on rear guard circle and like having two of the grade two orders and just having him, I'll be able to play the order plus 5k, play the order plus 5k. I'll swing for 15 and then swing for a big number. If I get a drive check, I can uh, give it all to the rear guard one. Um, so that is one of the plays that I really do enjoy doing. Um, but overall, he's just an aggressive beat stick. That's all he's there for during set two. I think he comes out um, for more manipulation with our Shadow Army tokens and being able to use them. Uh, moving forward, we play three Polar Cold Monster Drumler. Um, this is more of a personal attack than anything because you should, you could play another one of these and um, maybe another grade two. Uh, but I really do like this card. When it's placed on rear guard, if you have a Bissual, uh Dark Knight, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1 to draw a card, he kind of replaces himself. And if you are drawing into shield, it is very beneficial because he can still intercept if he needs to. He doesn't gain power, but even still, it is a very good card to have. Moving forward to our grade 3s, we play 2 Lightning Thief Monster Jabatel. Um 
important part about him is if we're in Abyssal Dark Knight, if we would attack, we attack the entire column. This is kind of important for decks that are like Bruce or Bastion, where we can get over those and force our opponents into awkward guards where they have to guard both the units if they're combo pieces. Um, we don't want to play a lot of them because there's not a lot of decks. Like, for example, Barrel Magus, this card does not work well against Barrel Magus, but it also does not work well against... Uh, um, I want to say Bastion, that's not who I'm thinking. Diablos. Um, it doesn't work well against Diablos because they do soul charge their units. Um, so they can manipulate which ones they're putting into the soul and which ones are not. Um, so yeah. Uh, just a fun little card. Moving forward, we play the playset of Cardinal D Dace Orphist. Um, again, during during your turn, plus 5k on bag or rear guard. Of course, we want to ride him as much as possible, but if you end up with a bunch of him, it doesn't feel bad to have to call him to get that plus 5k on rear guard circle, so you can pass some barriers. Um, and then during our turn, we can counter blast two to make straddle army tokens. Um, don't forget that persona ride is something that we give ourselves. It's not something that just goes on the units. So when we persona ride, we can get make our front row tokens 2500 which is really really powerful and then moving forward um i decided to save the um the orders for last this is howling mid or uh, moonlit night um it's the grade two order uh to play it we have to soul blast one um auto when this card is in the order zone draw one card or when it's put there and then finally order zone if your order only has world cards, the following effects activate uh, equal to the number. One card were in Dark Knight, two or more cards were in your world becomes Abyssal Dark Knight. So one thing I do like is this card is very, very powerful. Um, being able to cycle itself for just a Soul Blast since we don't utilize our soul at all. This is probably the most powerful card in this deck. Um, because between this card um, and being able to search for this card, like if you have it in opening hand, you can search for a second one and be an Abyssal Dark Knight on turn two, which is very, very powerful. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy this card. Sorry, I only have one foil um, and we only pulled three rares. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, cool, uh, I guess I guess I'll just have to play the foil. But uh, yeah, Abyssal Dark Knight or... Howling Moonlit Knight is a very powerful card. Um, definitely one that you would want to play um, a playset of. And finally, we have our playset of In the Darkness Nobody Knows. It's our grade three order and the only other order we can play currently. Uh, to play it, we have to Soul Blast one. When it's placed in the order zone, we can retire one of our opponent's front row rear guard. So it's basically a Blaster Blade, um, which is relatively nice for a soul blast instead of a counter blast since we don't get to utilize our soul blast um in the order zone it has the same effect as howling moonlit night where if we have one card in order we have dark knight two or more cards in order we have abyssal dark knight um this is pretty good spot removal again it gets rid of combo pieces um that are in the front row really easy and it can also get rid of like big intercepts if your opponent has a big intercept we can get rid of it so we can punch for a lot of damage and keep them at bay um but yeah guys that is the deck that is orphist um if you enjoyed the deck leave a like comment down below let me know some changes that you would make with this deck i've i've pretty much enjoyed it over the last month i've played it um also don't forget to hit that subscribe button every subscription helps the channel and without further ado guys have a blessed one